Hello and welcome to Workflow Lab. So in this lab, we will look at how to use a PL SQL document uh, in the workflow. So the idea is to generate an HTML uh, for it's it's basically a format well formatted uh, uh, well formatted uh, email uh, rather than the text email that's coming out of the workflow. So uh, make sure all the you know the you know we have all the workflow builder is installed. Um, so as as always, the zip file will be available for you to download. So we have gone through uh, this many times. So we have started with the vacation request. I will go to an approver. He can he can either approve or reject it. Uh, then we added a loop condition where the uh, re re requester can resubmit the uh, vacation request if it's rejected. We also added a database interaction where once the approval is uh, uh, once the approval is approved, once the vacation is approved, uh, the data is stored in the database. We also added a few checks to make sure that the submitter is not the approver. We also add a new process to reset the uh, input fields. The idea was to play around with the sub process within a uh, you know, within the workflow. Then we added uh, timeout and loops, uh, where if the vacation request is more than um, you know, if if it's if, if if basically if it's times out, you know, it'll it'll execute a couple of times, and then finally it will be automatically approved. Then we added um, <coughs> uh, deferred processing, where you know, once the once the approval is sent, we'll have to do a workflow background engine. Uh, right now, we're going to add one more uh, one more feature, which is going to be a well formatted uh, email uh, from the uh, from the system. So before we proceed, um, before we proceed, I want uh, so so we are going to build a HTML formatted uh, email. Um, so we'll look at the package first. So, so this package is already installed in the previous lab. So if you haven't installed it, you may have to go back to a previous lab. And and there is a lab that specifically installs the, uh, the database script. So let me go ahead and open the database script so we can take a look at it. So this is the script that uh, we have, the package body that we have. So the, pro the procedure that we can execute is vacation schedule. So what it does is it uh, it's going to it's going to look at the display type, which is the uh, which is one of the uh, which is the uh, it takes the display type from the uh, from your settings, and if the, if it's if it's a text HTML, then you set the document type to be a text HTML, and the document would be generated. It's a var car. We can do so. There's a limit of 32k characters when you do that. So uh, we're going to build an HTML template. It's going to add a table row, and it's going to create. It's going to uh, execute this cursor with this document ID, and it's going to generate uh, a, a template. A template. So it's a pretty simple one. You know, that you can you can use this to build more complex HTML. So right now we have a very simple um, simple um, HTML. Um, so it, all it does is it's going to it's going to display. This this query is going to execute. It's going to show you for this approver. These are the vacation days that are that are scheduled. Um, so it's a simple one, but uh, it's a good start for you. So our goal is to get the output in a, in, a, in a well formatted uh, document. So let's see how to uh, how to do that. So we'll go ahead and open the workflow builder. So I've added a, so I have one workflow builder. Go ahead, expand. We're going to add an attribute first, which would be called uh, the. So we're going to add an attribute called vacation schedule doc. So we're going to add right click new attribute, vacation schedule doc. Display name would be vacation schedule document. Description would be the same. Type is a document. Target would be full full window. Default value is null. Actually, we're going to use the default value like this. So we're going to use the default value as a PL SQL package. So in this case, we're going to we're going to say this is the package that we're going to execute, and this is the parameter that we're going to pass. So if you look at this package, so we can see that we pass the document ID as the uh, as the as the value. So let's go ahead and go to the next step. So let's go ahead and create a message now. Let's go ahead and click. You know, actually, we'll start with a message. Right click, 
new message. Let's go ahead and uh, enter the information. So go to body and uh, we're going to specify the message as vacation schedule doc. So this would, if you can guess it, this is the attribute that we have defined. So let's go ahead and bring that attribute down to this uh, work vacation schedule document. We also need the requester because it's the requester is the uh, it's part of it too. So let's go ahead and create a notification now. So let's go ahead and put the internal name, display name. Icon would be notification icon. Okay, a function name would be So okay, no new notification. Let's go ahead and create it again. Vacation schedule. Display name. Notify info. Leave the uh, leave the function name as it is. We'll tie the message to the workflow schedule message. Click apply. Click OK. So now let's go ahead and add the messages. Let's go ahead and expand the process. Let's go ahead and delete uh, this information, this connection. Then go ahead, let's go ahead and pull in this information here. Let's go ahead and connect these two. Right click and drag. Right click, drag. It's giving some mining. It's a uh, okay. There's a you need a performer, so let's go ahead double click node and the performer. You're going to select item attribute. This would be the uh, approver. Performer would be the requester. So let's go ahead and save it. So at this point, the workflow, the changes that we have done. So we have created a attribute, created an attribute. The attribute points to the workflow function. And uh, we have created the message. And the message has a body, which is the attribute that we have defined. And we are passing in the requester as uh, one of the parameters. Then we have created a notification where we have, uh, we have tied it to the message. So once we have defined that, we drag that we drag that in between the location schedule and then process. Let's go ahead and run. Let's go ahead and save it to the database. Give the apps apps, then give the host name. So once the database data is uploaded, once the, once the workflow is uploaded to the database. Let's go ahead and go expand system administrator or any other uh, any responsibility that has a workflow admin. So click on administer workflow, click on developer, developer studio. Uh, search for your workflow type, click go. And you would, you know, you make sure you click go. Uh, we will bring your workflow, click run, enter your information. Um, just click submit. It's going to confirm. Click OK. Once it's done, click on the status monitor tab. Uh, go ahead and search for your workflow. Enter your the, uh, workflow started as today. Click Go. So go ahead and click the uh, the select and status diagram. So you can see that the workflow. You can see at least the workflow is the right one. So you can see that you know right right now it's at the vacation uh, pool. Let's go ahead and run the workflow background. So let's go ahead and approve the, let's go ahead, you know, go to monitor search. Let's go ahead and approve the workflow. Run the back work, workflow background engine because we have a time, we have, uh, we have, you know, this, we have set the uh, time to 
you know a asynchronous process so we have to click the workflow or kick the workflow background engine so once it's done you can see that the workflow is completed and we can see that uh, the the new message is uh, the new message is displayed let's go ahead and open the vacation schedule message so it looks something like this as it's a more formatted uh, uh, display so you can you know this is a simple one you can make it more fancier than uh, than than you you know than, than you like um, it's up to you to play around um, uh, you know you can make a you can make it as as elaborate as possible you can but the problem is you have to be uh, you have to be really playing with the, uh, the HTML tags in the PL SQL document but uh, at least uh, you know you get an idea how to use a PL SQL document in the workflow so let's let's take a quick look at the workflow that we have built so it pretty much uh, you know this is the workflow is about we will uh, next chapter we will download a few more workflows from the serial workflows and we'll try to look at it so at this point we have um, we have built this uh, check approver function where we could check if the approval is the same as a requester if it's the we will you know we will reject it if not uh, it's going to check for the it's going to do a vacation proposal here uh, we have uh, we have added the timeout to be um, one minute. So if it's uh, you know and make sure the performer is a requester. Uh, so one so basically uh, you know after one minute it's going to expire and it's going to come to the loop counter. So we're going to loop it uh, two times. Then uh, once it's once it so it loop and uh, after three after after the th second x second it's going to automatically approve the workflow. It's going to update the table and it's going to email this uh, this particular message we also if it's rejected uh, the user has the ability to resubmit so if you look at the uh, so we have the result type as uh, yes no so where we said if it's a reject if the vacation is rejected and it, the requester want to resubmit he has the option so there is a this separate process that we have built to reassign it and we have used and or or and is to make sure all these functions are running parallel and to an end at the same time. If you use or, you, know, you would, um, you know, you would end up, you would end, you know, one of them would come in and end. So that's uh, pretty much the workflow that we have built. It's a simple one, uh, but I think uh, it'll give you enough hands-on. So hopefully, uh, this uh, this this tutorial helped you to get a good understanding of the workflow and to get yourself um, get yourself get yourself ready to start the workflow. Thank you.